Hello everyone, uh, today I'm making a tutorial on widget development, specifically answering a question that I get asked a lot, which is how do you access Captivate variables in Captivate 6? Now this question comes up a lot because the location where you used to be able to access Captivate variables in Captivate 5.5 and below has changed with Captivate 6. So let's just have a look at an example over here. So here I have a variable called Captivate variables. And as you can see down here, I have two text fields. And in these lines of text over here, I'm assigning each text field with a Captivate variable. So using the Captivate variables variable, I'm grabbing CP info current slide, which is a system variable and assigning it to a text field. And I'm also grabbing my variable, which is a custom user variable that I've made in my Captivate projects and I'm assigning it to this text field over here. Now, in order to grab the Captivate variables, what you used to have to do was locate the Captivate main timeline because that was where Captivate variables were stored before. And how you do that was fairly easy. All you'd have to do is basically, you know, find the highest movie clip in the movie. And this line of code here allowed you to do that. Okay. now. If we go and test this code in Captivate 5, we can see that, yep, it works. I'm able to grab these two variables, my value being the, vari uh, the value of my variable. But if I go over to Captivate 6 and I try this same widget, and if I allow it to publish, which takes longer, as you can see, the widget is not even appearing at runtime. That's because it's going along in its merry way dee -dee 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 -dee, and trying to grab the Captivate variable, finds it's not there, and explodes, essentially. So how do we go about changing things so we can access Captivate variables in Captivate 6? OK, well, if we just look at this code in a little bit more detail, this is all inside a custom function that I've built. Now, when is this function being called? Well, it's being called inside the Captivate template. The CP set value template method is a very common one to use. What happens in this method is that Captivate is passing in uh, to the widget a lot of information about the movie and the makeup of the movie, including the Captivate variables. So here, after this object has been assigned to the mMovie handle variable, I'm getting my get variables function called. So if we jump back over to that method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely comment out these two lines of code. And instead, I'm going to use this line of code. OK, so what's going on here? Well, I'm assigning this same Captivate variables variable with this. I'm grabbing that movie handle variable that we saw before in CP set value. And I'm calling the get movie props function. And this is a function unique to this movie handle object. And this returns you another object, which also has a lot of information about the Captivate movie. And on that object is something called variables handle. This is where you should access your Captivate variables. So I'm assigning that variables handle object to our Captivate variables function. Now, uh, over here, our Captivate variables function is already being used to access Captivate variables, so I don't need to change any of the code there. All I have to do is save the movie and publish by pressing Control Enter or any other sort of keyboard shortcut you may have set up for that. And if I go back to Captivate 6, right click on the widget, click Update, and then publish the movie, we'll be able to see whether we've been successful in accessing the Captivate variables or not. So over here we see, yes, just the same as in Captivate 5.5, I'm able to get those system and user variables again. Now, this line of code actually works just as well for Captivate 5, 5.5, and Captivate 4 even. So if I go back to 5, a Captivate 5 and update my widget and then publish the movie again, you can see in the published output, yes, I'm still able to grab those Captivate variables. So if you're accessing Captivate variables, always use this method. Then you don't have to worry about making it backward compatible and it should always be like this into the future. Now, the most simplest way of actually accessing Captivate variables is not to use the um, Adobe widget template at all, but rather to use Widget Factory, which is an API for building widgets, which takes away a lot of the complexity 
and a lot of the little niggly issues you might come across, for example, this one here about accessing Captivate variables. So here's a variable that I've made, so here is a widget that I've made in Captivate, and all I'm doing here is I'm using the Captivate variables property, which is accessible through Widget Factory, and accessing CP info current slide and CP variable, sorry, and my variable from that same object. And if I go into Captivate 6, I'll delete this widget here, and I'll copy in my Widget Factory widget. I've not had time to set it up as fancy as the other one, but as you can see with the published output over here, it is accessing those variables just as well in a much simpler, less brain-intense way of going about it. So that's how you access Captivate variables in Captivate 6.